Okay, we have 10 minute topics and today's topic is one that I think is gonna get a lot of views. It's called raising money. So we always get asked a lot about raising money and our videos on raising money got a lot of views because most people before they get into the business believe that money is what's holding them back. If I only had money, I'd buy real estate and I would get it. And if you could tell me how to raise money, then I'm gonna figure out how to do well. Let me explain a couple of things. Money is not the hard part. There's tons of money, billions, if not trillions of dollars available out there if you have a good deal. The hard part is finding the good deals. If you find the good deals, you can come to us, you can come to a thousand other people and you'll get the money for it. I promise you. Money should never be the thing that holds you back. There is, I'm gonna say an infinite amount of money out there for good deals. So. Don't let money hold you back. Don't think that only when I raise money, I'll get it. For us, we started doing this. We had not a lot of money. We ended up raising money later when we realized what we were doing because of the way we wanted to do it. But we weren't even doing it right for the four years because we were just buying stuff at auction. And the truth is, the truth is, um, if you want to do it that way, that's fine. But there's so much money out there. It's it's like I said, almost infinite. So the question is when do you raise money? Now, if you are rehabbing and not wholesaling and you have a deal and your hard money lender is giving you X and there's a shortfall and you need, for example, 10 or 15% of the acquisition cost, and you're gonna need closing costs and you're gonna need uh, payments, monthly payments, you can easily find an equity partner, someone who is going to lend you the money and take a piece of the cut, a piece of the profits when you sell it. Now, ideally that's someone who trusts you. If you never did a deal before, there's obviously gonna be some, some uh, suspicion as to whether you're gonna make this happen or not. Uh, you're better off partnering with somebody who's done it before so that they feel uh, that maybe this won't be a bust and maybe your numbers are right. Um, that's when you need to raise money. You don't need to raise money before you find a deal. And, and, and this old age old question, do I raise the money first or do I get a deal first? I'd get a deal first, get a deal. And then if you, if you're stuck, call us, if it's a good deal, I guarantee you the money will be there. Um, so there's different ways to raise money and different parts of raising money, right? So there's, there's hard money, right? Which is the most common, uh, not the most common, but this hard money, which means uh, on a fix and flip deal, a lender right, is going to lend you a percentage of the acquisition cost and a percentage of the construction cost. Uh, and it's always going to be a percentage of what the after repaired value of the ARV is going to be. So that's how they're really basing it. Some will go 65%, some will go 70%. But they want to see enough room on this that you can make money, that you'll make money on the deal, and that uh, they're going to get paid back at the end. So that's a typical hard money deal. They'll lend you 85 or 90% of the acquisition. They'll lend you 90 to 100% of the construction cost. Uh, the rates, you know, when we started, I think we paid 14% and six points. Rates now are much lower, um, eight, nine, ten percent. Uh, there's always going to be some points, and uh, but not six. And uh, that sh can get you started if you have some savings. Um, there is private money, which is, which we use when we started to fill that gap. Right, we took private lenders. There are private lenders who lend you 100%, and you're going to see a lot on the on the internet about private money lending you 100%. Um, that works in other states where you're buying something for $50,000. People will lend $50,000 for the whole deal. For us, where the deals are three, four $400,000, it's less common, and you need to understand that. Now, you still can have someone who's got uh, you know, $500,000 in their self-directed IRA. In an IRA, you move it to a self-directed and you can put it into a deal. For sure, that, that's out there. That's private money. Um, and then there's bank money, regular standard bank money. So we use that when we wanted to refinance a deal or two or a rental that we held. We went to a bank and we refinanced out of the hard money loan. And if there was a private money equity port, they got paid off too. And then we got a bank lending, a bank, a regular bank lender. So, I mean, for a bank, the property has to be financeable. It has to be in good shape. All the systems have to work and you have to qualify, right? Your credit has to be good. Your, uh, you have to show enough income to qualify with, in addition to some rental income if you're taking rental income. Um, on hard money, there's less qualifications. They might run credit. They're probably not going to worry about your income. They're going to might want to see uh, um, track record 
but uh, on a bank loan, you got to show enough income to qualify for all your debt that's showing up in your credit report. Um, so private money is the best option. Usually, if you can do one one lender for an entire deal, that's usually the best. When we did a combination of hard money and private uh, money, um, we would pay a lender at the end of each deal, and then we'd have to pay split the equity. So we were paying two people. We were ma- really making two people a lot of money, and we were getting a smaller part. But that was the way we started. We didn't have enough. We put our own money into the first deal, and we wanted to do more deals. We, we got two more deals right away, and we didn't have enough money for it. So we had to do that, and it worked out for us, right? Do I wish we would have had private money lending us the whole thing? Sure. But that just wasn't how it worked. Um, but private money is the best option. Um, when you're getting hard money, as I said before, um, most of them want to see some kind of track record. Some will like lend you on your first deal. They might ask you to put up more. You might need more private money if you don't have it, or if you have the money, you can put it up. Um, but but using them in combination is what we did to get started, and it's a it's a it's it can work, right? Um, because a typical deal that we do is let's say going to be a two two fifty or three hundred thousand dollar acquisition cost. A hard money lender will lend you let's say eighty to ninety eighty percent of it, for example. Um, so that's forty to sixty thousand dollars. You get a private money lender to lend you that sixty plus let's say another ten thousand for closing costs plus another twenty five thousand dollars. You get somebody to give you a hundred grand, and you'll be able to make monthly payments on the hard money loan. You get the deal done. You, again, you're going to split the profits. If it's a fifty thousand dollar uh, net profit at the end, you're only going to make 25, but you don't have to put up your money, and it's for us it was a good option uh, for a while. Um, a very important thing to know is that lenders are a good resource. So this is something we come up with all the time. We come up to all the time. Somebody comes to us and says, "I went to a hard money lender, and the guy said it wasn't a good deal," and I still think it's a good deal. And when we look at it, 99 out of 100 times, it's not a good deal. Lenders are not there to say no. Lenders want to say yes. Hard money lenders, private lenders, they want to lend you money. That's how they make money most of the time. Even if it's part-time, that's what they do. If they tell you the deal's not good, it's probably not good. We had a hard money lender tell us on two deals that it wasn't good, that it wasn't a good deal. One of them we listened to, one of them we didn't. The one we didn't, we ended up losing a little money on. Um, usually, they know they've had more experience and they've seen deals go bad or they've seen deals that didn't work out the way their borrowers thought they would, and they have that experience. Use them as a resource. If they tell you the deal's not good, the deal may not be good, and you have to really think about that. And it's hard. It's hard. I know it's hard. When you get a deal, and you're convinced this is the deal, and you're not doing that many deals at the time, and you are 100% sure that what that lender told you is not true. Lender told you the, the after repair value is not there. He doesn't know the area. I do better. Lender told you this has got a high risk factor. The deal we did, that was a very old house. Remember, it was over 100 years old. And it, and the lender told us, listen, you might have trouble selling this. I don't want to lend on it. And we did have trouble selling it. And he was right. We ended up losing a little bit of money on it after holding it for way too long. I mean, I think I think there were mitigating factors that we could have, we made mistakes on it. We priced it too high. We spent too much money on it. We priced it too high. We might have got out earlier and made, and, and made some money. But the point is, he. it's very hard when you're, you can't get married to a deal. You get a deal and the seller says yes to you. you, you the, the sky opens and angels start singing. You think this is the greatest thing in the world. You bring it to a lender and the lender goes, there's not enough room in it. And you, you feel like the guy's wrong. You're going to sell it for more. You're going to do a better job than everybody else. I'm telling you, lenders want to say yes. They don't want to say no. It's not the same as a, as a, I was in the mortgage business for a long time. People say no there it's pretty much straightforward. You don't have enough income to qualify. Your credit's not good. Hard money lenders want to lend. They want to lend. If they're saying no because the deal's not good, the deal's probably not good. If you bring this up, if you, and I'm, I'm willing to say, if you bring a deal to two lenders, two different lenders, and they both tell you it's not good, it's not a good deal, right? People don't understand what, sometimes when you're new, you don't understand what a good deal is. And lenders really help. So, so you got to ask yourself, what you're doing and do you really need money also? Um, if you're wholesaling, you don't need that much money. Um, you got to spend some money on marketing, but you can call and text for free and we can help. We started a few people on uh, with plans on how to start wholesaling and it's not expensive. I think it was around $1,500 or less. Didn't come to us. That was money for a list and money for skip tracing. And we saved them a lot of money on both those components. We can give you a plan to start. 
and you don't need a lot of money because you can call on your cell phone and text on your cell phone unlimited for free i think everybody's got that plan now so um it depends what you're doing right there's pros and cons to both of those pros and cons to wholesaling pros and cons to rehabbing um but money should not be holding you back getting the deal is the hard part if you get the deal the money will be there 